What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Around the VLA, episode one, a new live show here on the VLA YouTube channel that we are very excited about. I'm Rob St. Clair, uh, my co-host Vince Zanzuki, live from Phoenix, and a very special guest to preview us, the VLA Cup, coming up this weekend in his building, Mr. Loy Ball. Guys, welcome to the show. All right, here we go. <laughs> Good to be here, man. As always, uh, to talk with you, Rob, uh, Vince, I'm a little less excited to talk about or two, but whatever. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Well, both of you guys, uh, veterans of the Deep Corner, the podcast, uh, this is something a little bit different. So this is something that we're trying to do live on the, on the channel. Uh, we can see you guys in the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, hit us up in the chat. We're going to answer your questions throughout the show. Uh, we got some video elements. We got some like graphics about the pools and the bracket for this weekend. We'll dig into some stats and all sorts of good stuff in the subsequent weeks of the, sh in the, in the, subsequent weeks of the show. Uh, but for now, we have VLA Cup to talk about. This is a massive, massive tournament that's coming up this weekend, uh, streaming all weekend long here on YouTube starting early Friday morning at Loy's Building. So before we break down kind of how the format of the tournament works and what we can expect, Loy, uh, as the host of this thing, it's been about a year since we've been in your building. Uh, what has it taken to put this thing together this time around with this many teams? Yeah, it's been a huge undertaking. As much as I give uh, Vince a hard time, he's done an amazing job putting this event together. He's done a lot of, of the work for us, uh, not only helping us obviously get a, a, a huge field, 11 teams, but you know, getting 25 matches in three days on two courts is no small task. And so uh, I'm really proud of him and the work he's put in to, to get this event going. Uh, the people here in Angola are very excited. You know, uh, Our main uh, sponsor is the city of Angola, actually helped us gave some funds to get this tournament off the ground. Obviously, our area kids are excited to be part of it, uh, whether they're shagging balls or coming to watch. Anytime uh, we get high-level volleyball here uh, at BSA and the Northeast Indiana, uh, the people really enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to a great weekend. It's always great to see the board of directors for the VLA. Good to see you, Rob. Good to see the players. Super excited for the uh, six new teams, uh, the Tier 2 teams that are coming in. And I know it's going to be some high-level volleyball. So for those in person and for those watching on the YouTube, um, it's going to be awesome. Well said. Uh, it's going to be huge. We're really excited about all the teams that are showing up, the quality of players that are showing up, and the level of ball that we know will be played. And you kind of alluded to it there, Loy. Uh, we are welcoming fans in your building, which was not the case last summer uh, when we ran the kickoff classic event. But if you happen to be in the Midwest or in Northeast Indiana, uh, definitely show up because as cool as it is to watch these guys play on the YouTube stream, it's even cooler to watch them in real life. So show up at BSA and support us in person. If you're around, we are welcoming fans this time. Yeah. And it's a super good deal. I mean, we're giving $10 wristbands get you in all weekend. So for 10 bucks, you can watch 25 men's professional matches. I mean, you're not getting a better deal than that anywhere. Um, not even on your Hulu and your Netflix and stuff like that. So come on out, watch it live here in Indiana, uh, a little bit more progressive than some other states. Uh, our mask mandate is gone. Uh, you're, of course, welcome to wear one. Uh, same with um, the fact we have no limit on spectators. So we're hoping for a decent crowd to come up and, and watch live volleyball. And, and like Rob alluded to, I mean, watching it uh, on TV or live stream is amazing. But this little uh, yellow and blue ball in person goes a heck of a lot faster than what it looks like on TV and live stream. So come on out and enjoy some time here at BSA. Well said. So Vince is the guy who's been the mastermind of kind of throwing this schedule together. 24, 25 or so matches in three days is just a ridiculous amount. So we are using two courts in Lloyd's gym, which is a fantastic facility to accommodate that level of volleyball that we're trying, trying to produce. But uh, actually, we might as well just jump in and look at the schedule here. So let's check out Pool A, and we'll sort of talk about how um, everything is being spread around the gym and how people can follow throughout the weekend. So here we're looking at Pool A, uh, our, the only three-team pool. We have the two other four-team pools with the 11 teams that we have in the building. Um, we got Ruckus from SoCal, the Icemen from Chicago, the defending champs, and, and the Boston Bounce. So we're really excited about this pool. And before we talk about the matchups, Vince, can you quickly go over kind of how it's going to work on YouTube all weekend long, the fact that we're live streaming two courts sometimes at the same time? Yeah, so you'll notice you got the uh, YouTube uh, logo right there next to the 2 p.m. match on the Iceman versus Ruckus. Um, so 
as we go through the pool graphics, you'll notice that uh, there's there's a handful of those. Um, there's going to be five matches that we will be live streaming on both uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, those ones will be pretty much our feature matches featuring Rob himself will be uh, commentating on those. And then uh, then we also have a membership program, which you can uh, subscribe or not subscribe, but you can join the membership program uh, for the YouTube channel. And uh, if you click that, then you will also get the live stream for the uh, court two. So uh, we'll have both courts streaming. Um, but one will be for members only, and uh, the feature one will be with uh, Rob commentating. And for everybody. And don't worry. Uh, first of all, the membership is like 99 cents a month. It's an unbelievable deal. So if you want to like more than double the amount of volleyball you're getting this weekend, uh, throw us some of your membership. Throw us 99 cents a month, and you will get all that volleyball plus more. Um, but if you don't want to do that, don't worry, because all of the matches from Court 2 will be uploaded and made available for everybody after the fact so if you want to watch those afterwards no worries but if you want to watch them live definitely consider becoming a member of the youtube channel so let's jump in here pool a uh this this is kind of a stacked pool this is a very interesting pool and really all of them are for being honest but what jumps out to me right away is the Iceman ruckus matchup that we're going to see at 2 p.m on friday all these times are eastern by the way northeast indiana um this this might be a championship preview on day one. Like, no joke. These two teams are that good. Yeah, I think that with both of these teams, especially now that uh, uh, we there's a lot of Pepperdine uh, rivalries here uh, with uh, why Zorich is actually going to be attending. I just got the confirmation from uh, Tim Faulkner that why Zorich will be playing uh, our, 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 I guess, defending MVP <laughs> will be, uh, will be competing. So, uh, yeah, that, and then we got a few Pepperdine guys, uh, Michael Wexter, uh, Kaveen Vaz from, uh, Ruckus, uh, both of them, uh, really round out the dynamic of that team and they're going to look pretty good. They're going to look pretty good. They've been featured a lot here on the YouTube channel lately as they've been scrimmaging various people, including themselves in SoCal, and kind of gearing up for this tournament. If you've seen the roster that they are bringing, uh, you can check out the website. It's it's pretty nasty. It's, they're going to be really good right away. Uh, by the way, in, in case anybody wants to check out like more of a deep dive on each of the team's rosters, uh, check out the last episode of The Deep Corner. Uh, don't worry, just because this show is coming into existence, The Deep Corner is not going anywhere. Um, I did a breakdown of all the t all 11 teams' rosters the other day, so go check that out if you want to hear more about my thoughts on who's showing up. But So in addition to Iceman Ruckus, you also have Iceman Bounce, which was a matchup we saw three or four weeks ago when we were in Buffalo. And the Boston Bounce in their first VLA action ever were the only team to beat Chicago that weekend, the defending champions. So that was pretty notable, and they split two that weekend. This match at 8 p.m. on Friday will be kind of the rubber match to break that tie. So I think that's going to be really interesting, too. Yeah, I mean, that bounce team's legit. Obviously, a couple 6-7s, some 6-8s. Uh, uh, my boy Jalen Penrose, an opposite on that team. Uh, dude's a Skywalker. You've seen him play. Also, just a great kid. I, I can call him kid because I'm 50. But uh, <laughs> um, I, think, I think that team will be surprising as well. Maybe not quite as cohesive as some of the other teams that have played a little more together. But you look through these rosters i mean there's not a deficit of athletes coming to angola this weekend yeah yeah very well said the, the size is absolutely off the charts like we've got we've got more six nine and above guys than i've probably have ever seen in a gym at once in my life so uh i'm gonna feel really short this weekend even more so than usual yeah we got our first seven footer coming in and playing with sports connects <laughs> Yeah, so, that is absolutely notable insane. for our uh, for our rosters. So, just to wrap up talking about Pool A here, uh, the only three team pool, like I said, so the schedule there is very simple. Um, each team plays the other two, so two matches per team. Um, we'll rank them pretty simply, one through three after they're finished, and then they'll get seeded into the bracket accordingly, which we'll get to in a second. So, let's now jump to Pool B. Uh, let's bring everyone up here. All right, so Pool B, you've got Team LVC, you've got the, the Rising Tide from SoCal, you've got SportCon X from San Francisco, as Vince just mentioned, and you've got the New York Pride uh, making their Tier 2 debut as well. So I don't even know where to start with this pool. I guess we might as well start with Team LVC because we at least kind of know what to expect from them. Having already played twice this year, 
Um, they went one and two against Lloyd's guys back in January in Fort Wayne. They went two and two against Chicago and Boston in Buffalo, New York a few weeks ago. Uh, and of course, our guy Chris Hosley um, pulling out all the stops has, has increased his roster as he always does uh, for a tournament of this magnitude. So uh, Team LVC seated second are, are a legitimate championship contender as always. Uh, bringing in Greg Petty from Chicago, a very high-level outside hitter, and uh, Andrew Sato, a libero from Long Beach State. So a couple big pickups for Hosley as, as he sometimes is able to do. So what do you guys think of that? What do you think of Team LVC's chances? Well, Hosley has always copied everything I've ever done when it comes to professional <laughs> volleyball. And this is no different. You know, he has a great group of core guys that he's had now for a while, right? So, and, and he's been smart enough to know to go up and pick up a couple guys. Sato, kid, obviously, is legit. You know, I've known Greg. Uh, I know the Petty family a long time from Chicago. Greg had a great year overseas once he got healthy. He's got a heavy arm on the left. So, I look for them to be typical LVC team you know they're going to ball control well they're going to grind uh, they got some good pins uh, uh middles that block the ball they're going to pass real well it's just a hard out for anybody and so I think their seating is probably exactly where they should be so they're going to start the weekend off our, our first streamed match on court one of the entire tournament is team LVC in what might be a brand new kind of in-state rivalry against the New York pride um, Vince, tell me what we know about New York Pride. Uh, you've talked to their guy, Terrence Crossan, who's their captain. Um, these guys are out of Long Island or New York City or both. Or Tell me what we know about New York Pride so far. Yeah, combination New York City and Long Island. Uh, Terrence actually used to uh, play train with us out in uh, Arizona. And uh, so I know him pretty well. And uh, he's got a handful of uh, Hawaii uh, graduates that are going to be coming out competing with the pride. Um, and yeah, they, they have, uh, we saw Anson Webb also, he was, uh, he compete, he, he played with LVC, uh, in uh, January, yeah. January. Yeah. In Fort Wayne. And so, I mean, guys that we've seen before, uh, notable names coming out of college and they're, they're going to look like, uh, a, a pretty solid group and with something to prove. So I can, I can imagine they're going to come out swinging. Yeah, and like I said in the deep corner the other day, like the, the seeding for all the Tier 2 teams was really just based on if they've played it all yet this year so far, and if not, just kind of when we received their registration. So just the fact that Pride seeded 11th, uh, don't read into that all that much because this team's going to be really, really good. Um, very notably, we're now able and excited to announce the fact that Pat Gassman is making the trip to play for the New York Pride, who literally like three days ago, two days ago, got the game winning kill in the NCAA championships as Hawaii won that national title. So he ended his career in the most perfect possible way. And then he's going to show up in Indiana like a week later, um, ready to absolutely play the dude six ten. He's an absolute monster. Uh, so we're really excited about him. Um, James Anastasiadis is another Hawaii guy that I'm stoked to have. And then a uh, Brandon Greenway, a uh, kind of dual pin guy out of the university of Charleston, um, going to be a big name to pay attention to all weekend. So that little in-state rivalry thing, first thing in the morning on Friday, is definitely worth paying attention to. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're going to be uh, – it's going to be a barn burner. Probably going to go five. That's what LVC likes to do. They, uh, <laughs> Christian, right. Christian Smith is going to set records uh, with assists because they, every single match seems to go four or five. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I expect that one to be a battle from the start. Well, Hosley can't play well two sets in a row. So, I mean, they go five all the time. <laughs> Ooh, you know Chris is coming off the bench to serve like one ball and then going right back to where he belongs. So, I'm sure you guys will remind him of that throughout the uh, weekend. Hosley's still 2-0 and as a starter. Just got to point that out. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. Okay, backing the man up. We like that. All right, so the, the, other, the other matchup and another in-state rivalry, perhaps, uh, in this pool, the Rising Tide finally getting some VLA action. Um, tier one squad that's kind of been with us from the beginning, but they haven't actually played under the VLA banner just yet because uh, COVID in California has been so difficult for them. Uh, but we're so excited to get that team. And I just gushed about their roster on the deep corner the other day. These guys are stacked. They've got four unbelievable middles, like four unbelievable outsides. Uh, they are, they're going to have so many choices to give some guys some rest and play some seriously good ball all weekend. Plus they've been practicing together a lot. So uh, Daniel Davidson's team is going to compete early 
against uh, their Northern California, perhaps soon to be rivals of SportCon X. And there is the seven footer you were talking about, Vince, uh, Kevin Rakestraw out of Stanford, um, a just, just a beast, just a beast in the middle. If there's one team that can handle that, though, it's Rising Tide. So maybe, Loy, what do you think about these Californians finally showing up to your gym? No, it's great. You know, um, I'm happy. You know, I've never been a huge fan of California, even though I had to live there for four years. Way too much traffic. <laughs> smog i like it over here in the midwest where we have you know mosquitoes and rain all the time no i'm super stoked you know it's kind of a long time coming i know daniel gets frustrated because of obviously with covid stuff we can't control you know hard to get out of the state hard to get movement so we're super stoked they're going to come out this way and, and they're going to have a great team like you said they've been trained together they look at the schools you know represented you know a lot of long beach irvine's pep stanford uh, lewis i mean uh, it, it's a who's who kind of, of college volleyball. And so just another example of the amazing talent that uh, we're blessed to have here in the VLA and young talent, to say the best. You know, I know in the past, a lot of our teams have been veteran laden. But as you go through these rosters, obviously the movement of the Volleyball League of America is happening. These young people are, are knowing that we're doing it the right way. And the board directors are trying to create these environments for people to play, whether it be at A's later in the year or here at the Ball Sports Academy next weekend. So just going to be awesome to see these big young people play volleyball at a high level. Agreed. A lot of these guys are active overseas professionals like right now. They're in the primes of their careers and they're coming back stateside in the summers and playing with us, just increasing the level of what we got going on to present to you guys next weekend, which is just amazing. So before we move off of this pool, I want to talk about the format. So you see those two matches, uh, the New York match, the all New York match and the all California match. Then the two winners of those will play and the two losers of those will play. Um, and it's kind of a miniature bracket pool. So after that, they'll get seated one to four and they'll get thrown into the bracket, which we'll get to in just a second. So now let's look at the last pool. And perhaps the most interesting, personally, for the guests here on this show, uh, featuring both the Phoenix Ascension and the home team, Team Pineapple. So the the meeting between the two of you guys, Vince and Loy, isn't guaranteed, but if you both win your first matches or if somehow you both were to lose your first matches, you'll see each other. Um on Friday, and I, I want to give the floor to both of you to do a little trash talking in advance, which I know you're both very capable of. So <laughs> let's hear it. No no way way. I'll let him go first. What do you got, boy? Only, only way I'm lacing him up is if I get to, if I'm playing against Vince. Uh, you, you'll see LB out there, rotation number one. If I if I see Vinny on the other side, I'll I'll be on the other side if you're on the other side. So uh, Perfect. expect that matchup if. Uh, if, if, if that's the case. <laughs> oh, man. So you heard it here first. If, uh, if, if, if we do get the Pineapple Ascension matchup, you will see both of these gentlemen suiting it up and dishing the rock. So uh, that I don't know, could, it's about could a happen. Day, man, it still comes out pretty good. So uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but not to be overlooked, the other two teams in this pool, uh, Ascension first match in the morning against Team LVC2. Uh, you, you see... Kind of obviously in the LVC network of all their guys that they have locally on the East Coast that play tournaments all the time. And I talked about this on Deep Corner. Like in normal years when LVC would send a, a bunch of representation to USAV Adult Nationals, it would be the Team LVC that you're used to that plays in Open, and then this Team LVC 2 or Legion Black team that plays in Double A. So these guys have actually played together a lot over the past several years and have done well in the Double A division at Nationals. So uh, they're no pushover. They're going to give Vince and his guys um, some serious, some serious problems on Friday morning. And then Loy and Team Pineapple facing off against a new Chicago Tier 2 team called Swede that I've actually played with a handful of times before. Uh, guys with, with great chemistry that go back a long way. So uh, no easy outs in this pool for sure. If, if you guys want that that personal Vince versus Loy matchup, your teams are going to have to earn it. Yeah, yeah I think it's a great... Oh, go ahead. Wait, yeah, that's the thing with both of these teams. I mean, they, they, they have such good chemistry. Swede's very uh, renowned, especially in the Midwest. LVC2 has been playing together. All those guys are recognizable on that roster um, and have been playing together for such a long time that uh, that, that chemistry could easily take uh, any, any, at any given match the distance, you know, and, and it gives them, a, a I wouldn't say an advantage over any of us, but definitely gives them uh, – makes them very capable. 
I think every yeah, team in that's awesome. every turn in this tournament that's true. Yeah, Robbie, I know you play with them too. You know, I've known Sweet a long time. You know, George Smith does a nice job putting those guys together. Remember lots of battles with Best in the Midwest, or whether it be Lloyd Ball Classic, stuff like that. So I know they'll come in uh, ready to prove themselves a quality team, and he's always got them well prepared. You know, likewise, I was going to make fun of LVC too because there's another Hosley on it, but I'm going to say something nice actually. Um, I think it's awesome that LVC has such a great stronghold uh, out there in the New York area and so many guys who want to be part of their family, so many guys who want to play. It's really a testament, you know, to, to the Hosley boys that they put that stuff together. And, and both teams play great volleyball. Both teams are great ambassadors for the sport. It's truly really been a blessing, actually, to have uh, guys like that, guys like Vinny, the rest of the people on our board who, as much as we like to make fun of each other and try to beat each other on the court, uh, have like-minded mission, which is to get this thing up and running, which – Believe it or not, I believe we're done. So. Well said. And I think just having this LVC2 team in this tournament and as good as I already know they're going to be just adds to the legitimacy of this event and to the whole like tier two model. I think it's just fantastic stuff all around for the growth of what we got going on here. So uh, also, Loy, got to point out that Swedes bring in a handful of Ball State representation, which might which might just get to you and you your IPFW guys just enough to create some sauce in that rivalry. So we're really looking forward to that. Yeah, I mean, obviously we got a, a chirp chirp on our team with uh, Big Matt Walsh, who will be here this weekend. Uh, but besides that, you know, our team is uh, ever changing. Just real quick to talk about pineapple. You know, as we talked about like two years ago, as uh, a lot of us started not to play as much, whether it be the Patacs or the Ball or the Gisses or the Jorge's and kind of the, the guys that probably, I'm dating myself, Vinny grew up watching play. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's you know, true. Point now we always had to get younger to try to continue to compete. So obviously uh, adding past uh as a setter, I'm such a big fan of his. and It's his team now, you know, um, I'll, I'll be there if needed, but it's his team as we've talked about before. Um, obviously, you know, Bruno uh, being around, uh, our, our big Brazilian with the hammer has been a big part of us. Um, we're bringing back Luis this weekend, which we're excited about. Our libero Luis Beltran will be back. So as you know, he can pass and play the ball a little bit. And then just some new young up. I mean, Tony Price was here last year. Uh, obviously, Lauren Gebert's son, Evan, just finished his fifth year. McKendry, he'll be on the outside too with us. Uh, another chirp, chirp in the middle, KO, who's been here a little bit. Um, and then a new one, we brought in Vargas. Uh, senior from IPFW, All-American outside. He was still around, wanted to come and train and play. And so I've uh, been watching Pele at IPFW the last – I'm sorry, PFW the last couple of years. So excited to add another new young arm that was the Don to the Team Pineapple family. An absolute slam dunk of a pickup for you guys. Really excited that you got Pele Green Vargas on board. Just a – freak of a good outside hitter from Puerto Rico who's played like senior national team level competitions with the Puerto Rican national team for several years already and he just finished college so that is an awesome we pickup I'm not even sure yeah we have to check his birth certificate <laughs> <laughs> all right uh yeah it's really good look at team pineapple there so let's now look at the bracket kind of how this is going to work so <laughs> Uh, all 11 teams make it out of pools in, into the championship bracket. Um, if you're a third or a fourth place team, you're going to play one of those early morning games or one of those morning sorts of games on the second court. And then we'll give you all four quarterfinals. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. You can see them on YouTube now. So you get all four quarterfinals. You got the first place team in pool A. You got a battle of second place teams in B and C. Um, all those matches, those four quarterfinals, all on Saturday, that are going to be absolutely electric. Um, there will be a consolation bracket as well for the teams that lose in those in that first round. So they'll play a couple more matches Saturday evening on court two. But then on Sunday, no more this two-court business. One court only, a uh, real uptick in the level of production. That It, it will be very clear when you watch it. Um, the two semifinals at 8 and 11 a.m. and then the final at 2. So on Sunday... It's uh, it, it gets serious. Only four of the eleven teams are even going to suit it up on Sunday, and those three matches will be truly the elite volleyball maybe ever even played on American soil, not by the national team. So, uh, if if you think what you're going to get Friday and Saturday is going to be great, uh, Sunday is really the day you want to stick around for. 
Yeah, for sure. By that time, I think people will have their rhythm. You know, even though some of these teams have been practicing, um, it's still not the same as playing a three out of five game match in a building that if it gets warm, will be a little steamy in here. Um, you know, we got the 44 foot ceiling, so balls won't hit up there. There'll be some, there'll be some teams that gel uh, throughout this event, and those will be the four teams at the end. And there'll be some teams that probably find the struggle bus, and no matter how good the, the roster looks, and they won't. I mean, volleyball is that game. You guys know that. That when a team gets rolling, gets hot, finds their rhythm, momentum, find what works in each rotation, and they start passing and serving, uh, like we tell our 12 U teams, passing and serving. Right? It's no different for Ball's going underhand, and the ball's going 80 miles an hour jump serve. And so whichever team kind of dials in those things will be the four teams on Sunday. And as you said, Rob, it'll be unbelievable volleyball. Yeah, yeah, as Rob also says, it's all about the serve and pass game. <laughs> and that's what's gonna that's what it's gonna be for sure. And yeah, there's that plus when when you are able to score those points on serve, those those blocks, those defensive plays, uh, everything in the high level men's game just magnified that much more because the side out percentages are so freakishly high if you can pass the ball so well. So uh, the, the level of volleyball, man, I just can't say enough to preview how phenomenal this tournament is going to be. I, I don't know, I don't know, man. But we, we're we've got a, a task ahead of us to hype this thing up to get the number of viewers that this event deserves. Because if you've heard us talk about the rosters, you've heard us talk about the matchups and the format, which I'm just so into how well the format is going to feature all these teams and just the level of like the volume of volleyball we're going to be able to produce. Uh, people are going to have everything they want out of this weekend. It's a volleyball fans paradise. Yeah, and we're going to touch across the entire, you know, gamut. Every single team is going to get seen, which is which is great, uh, especially under you know the the, the circumstances of trying to uh, cram in twenty five matches in three days. It's going to be a lot. Um, but uh, the cool thing is, is that it, this is kind of a blank slate. I mean, you got you know Dave Wizorek who really stepped up last summer. Cody Kessel really stepped up last summer to kind of. Uh, kind of make a name for themselves in the VLA, but this is an opportunity for a lot of players to kind of uh, break into a new league and, and you know, USA Volleyball right now to uh, to really set themselves apart and kind of make a name for themselves. And, uh, you know, we, we do a good job, I think, of promoting uh, those players. You know, got uh, Brandon Poindexter at a Chicago Iceman really has come a long way. He's, he's another one that, you know, is kind of, becoming a face of the league. And that's what we're looking for right now. Opportunities for both players and teams to do that exact thing. Cause a lot of teams here getting their first looks at this on this big of a stage and the opportunity that they all have to show what they've got as a group and to put their regions on the map in a, in a VLA, like national scale volleyball sense is a big opportunity for them. So I, I, I can't believe we found 11 teams that are this good to come to Lloyd's gym and play in this event. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, they're out there. You know, I know that the movement of the game, you know, with first point, match point, all these different organizations who are trying to help grow the game, especially on the men's side. Um, obviously, they had the final, you know, final four men's volleyball this past weekend. Uh, you know, Girls Beach was on TV the other day. Obviously, the women's side has grown a little, uh, actually a little faster than us, but I, but I hope we're right behind them. And I think this week will be another test of the fact that there is just a lot of good male volleyball players in America. And all they needed was a, a well-organized uh, league to showcase those skills. And that's what the VLA is trying to provide. And we hope and pray that while we have great competition, this eventually leads to them becoming mo more uh, notarized in, in America and internationally and, and getting jobs overseas. And then once this thing continues to grow, no one will go overseas. They want to stay here and play for us. So. You know, we understand it's a process. We understand it's going to take a lot of due diligence and work, but Vinny and the rest of the board, uh, we're willing to do it. We're going to do it the right way. We're going to do it the long way. But we know uh, all the teams will leave Angola, Indiana, BSA this weekend, knowing that um, we're here to, to help them be part of something special. Yeah, and that's one of the things, too, that I want to point out is that we're excited about, you know, Boston Bounce stepping up, Ruckus, Sport Connects, Swede, Pride, all these teams stepping up and, you know, we talk about, man, these, these rosters are great. Well, there's a lot of great rosters out there. Um, we, we just got to get them involved. And we were, we're trying to reach out and get into a lot of different regions, not just into the, you know, the New York area or the Chicago area, SoCal. Uh, we're, we're trying to hit everywhere in the country. 
And, uh, and that, that's what's great about our format is we provide everybody the opportunity to play, not just uh, the, the exclusive elite. We want to get as many uh, regions and areas involved as possible. So that's one thing that we're trying to demonstrate. And I think that these teams will demonstrate well is that, hey, these guys can compete. They are some great athletes. Yeah, great point about the, the tier two sort of model. We want everybody from everywhere and at every level. Uh, we will find a place for you to compete. Um, if you prove that you're interested and you're committed to being a part of this thing. So this, as Lloyd talked about, long process, uh, tons of great things ahead, but it all starts this weekend with the VLA Cup. So make very sure you are tuned in starting Friday morning and all weekend long leading up to Sunday's championship. Um, a ton more info is on the website. Uh, Vince has done an incredible job with the VLA Cup portion of the website. So all the detail you could want is there. Uh, the rosters are there. Um, Everything will be here on this YouTube channel. Just to go over it again, Court 1, uh, the feature courts live stream for free for everybody all weekend long. Um, the second court live stream for members, which is only 99 cents a month, uh, and then uploaded after the fact for everyone to watch publicly. So just tons and tons and tons of volleyball to pick up on. And before we get out of here, uh, Loy, a little surprise for you, my friend. I want you to take uh -oh. a look at... Uh, a, a play from the last time we were there in your building, and I believe the last time the Ascension and Team Pineapple matched up. And I want your take on, on this. Feel it coming. On feel this, it coming. I want your take on this particular highlight play. So let's check it out. Beautiful pass from Dryden. What a play by Loy Ball. Absolutely flinging that ball off the block and out of bounds. It beats that. Yeah. <laughs> really inveterate play by the big offensive setter. Yeah. Yeah, so the question here is, does any other setter get that call other than Lloyd Ball? It was the right call. What are you talking about? <laughs> any I, other setter in any other gym get that call? Hey, what? listen, when you have a building with your name on it, you can have that call too, Vinny. That's exactly the point I was going to make. I think I think Loyola had had it in the chamber to remind the referee who whose name was on the building if that guy hadn't gone his way. That ref looked both ways. He looked at Sam. He looked at Loy, and it was just like, yeah, this way. Vince, I think you're <laughs> just still salty that you lost the point. Just that point, though. We ended up winning the match somehow. <laughs> I, don't yeah, I thought you were going to show me the time where my kid lit him up down the line. I thought that was the oh, video. Yeah. 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 Should have been it, you know. Well, I don't have that. I don't have that one loaded up at the moment, but that that's one of the the very most viewed videos on this channel. So go check that out. Where uh, yeah. where I think ball that's to Dyer's ball, yeah. <laughs> lit Vincent the Dyer up down the line. Show that one, but since it was you, we figured we'd do something you did right. <laughs> it wasn't a problem. Yeah, Dyer made uh, you. Yeah, uh, uh, before. You I also just want to say, uh, again, I want to say a thank you to the city of Angola, who's helping us put this on. Uh, I also want to say thank you to our local sponsors, Jimmy John's, who's helping supply food for guys. Moe's, who's giving discount food for the guys. I'm um, obviously Makasa and Smack. I mean, we've been blessed to have a lot of good. I'm probably missing some of my MVP you can chime in. There's a lot of people who put a lot of faith and trust in us, right? And so it takes an army to pull this thing off. And so I just wanted to thank those local sponsors who've done it. Totally agreed. Uh, in addition to Mikasa, uh, the, our ball supplier, and Smack Sportswear, our apparel provider, provider, excuse me. Huge shout outs to those corporations for their support of the VLA. And yeah, like Lois said, it takes such a massive group of people and friends and family and companies to put on events like this. So we really thank everybody for their support. And in advance, we thank all of you for your viewership. So, Loy, Vince, anything else to share with the people before we get out of here until Friday morning? No, both of you have safe travels. I'm, you know, I know we joke. I'm excited to see both of you. Okay, can't wait uh, to after one night have an adult beverage uh, at the lake house and catch up a little bit. Okay, absolutely. All right, guys, thanks for hopping on the show with us, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, we will be back probably next Tuesday in a similar format to wrap up everything that happens with the VLA Cup this weekend. We will see you all first thing Friday morning for live matches, and we will 